Hi everyone. Hope you are well, staying safe and healthy. Welcome to this talk. My name is Hossein Hadipur, and I'm gonna present our paper entitled Comprehensive Security Analysis of Graph, which is a joint work with Sada Sadari, Majid Niknom, Ling Song, and Nasser Bagari. Let's start. I've divided my presentation into four parts. I'd like to begin by giving a short description about graph. Next, I'm going to discuss about the improved zero correlation distinguishers we have provided for graphs. And quickly after that, I will recall the relation between integral and zero correlation distinguishers and introduce our new integral distinguishers for graphs in this section. Finally, I'd like to tell you about how we significantly improve the differential distinguishers of graphs in a single Tuic model. So, let me give a short description of Kraft. Kraft is a light with a skinny like tweakable black cipher that has been introduced in FSE 2019, for which the efficient protection against differential fault attack has been considered from the design phase. It receives a 64 bit plain text with 128 bit key plus a 64 bit tweak, and then iterates 31 same round plus one linear round to produce a 64-bit ciphertext. As you can see in this picture, each round of graph, excluding the last one, performs five basic operations on the internal state. The internal state of graph can be viewed as a 4 by 4 array of nibbles. The first operation in each round is mixed column, in which the internal state is multiplied by an involuntary binary matrix. Then, round dependent constant and round tricky are XOR to the internal state. After that, an involuntary permutation is applied on the position of neighbor. Lastly, as the only nonlinear operation in the round, the same 4 bit S box is applied on each neighbor. The last round doesn't include permute nibbles and S box, and it is totally linear. Round tweaks of craft are produced using a simple tweak schedule. Tweak schedule of craft splits the 128 bit key into two 64 bit keys K0 and K1. Then, together with the 64 bit master tweak T, it generates four tweak keys according to these relations, where Q is a permutation on the position of tweak nibbles. Then, starting from TK0, Kraft uses these four tweak keys periodically. That's all I wanted to tell about Kraft. Now, let's move on to the next part of this talk in which I would like to talk about zero correlation kept analysis of graph. Before discussing about the zero correlation kept analysis, let's review the propagation rules for linear masks over the basic operations of block ciphers, including XOR, branching points, and S box. As you can see, all input output linear masks of XOR must be the same. For branching points, the XOR of output masks must be equal to the input masks, and the input output masks of SBOX must satisfy the linear approximation table of SBOX. Now, by giving a simple example, I'm going to show the impact of considering tweak schedule in zero correlation kept analysis. I've taken this example from the Rolf Ankeli et al. paper at FSC 2019 where they considered tweak schedule in zero correlation kept analysis for the first time. As you can see in this picture, this toy tweakable block cipher includes only two rounds, and the same tweak key is used in both rounds. Now, assume that gamma 0, gamma 1, and gamma 2 form a linear train for the data path of this cipher. So, let's consider the tweak schedule in our analysis. As you can see, 
in this picture at positions where the round tweak is XORed to the internal state, linear mask of tweak state must be the same as the linear mask of internal state. On the other hand, because of branching point in tweak schedule, the input mask for master tweak, which is denoted by alpha here, must be equal to the XOR of gamma 0, gamma 1, and gamma 2. Hence, Extra constraint is induced when we consider the tweak schedule. That is linear when the tweak schedule is nearly as well. In conclusion, the possibility of existing a zero correlation distinguisher is increased when we consider the tweak schedule. Considering the tweak schedule, our strategy to search for zero correlation distinguisher can be divided into two parts. At the first part, which is performed by computer, we generate a bit-oriented MIT problem to model the propagation of linear masks. Then, for all possible input-output masks with Hamming weight of 1, we call an MIT solver such as Gurabi to solve the generated model. The input-output mask for which the MIT problem becomes invisible yields a zero correlation distinguisher. At the second part, which is performed by human, the contradiction inside the discovered zero correlation distinguisher is extracted using manual approach. It should be noted that the linear behavior of craft depends on the starting bound. Given that four different tweaks are used in craft, it is enough to investigate four possible cases, which are denoted by RT0, RT1, RT2 and RT3, RT3 here. RT0 denotes the case in which the distinguisher begins from where the TK0 is used. RT1, RT2 and RT3 are defined in the same way. Using our strategy, we provide 14 round zero correlation distinguisher for craft, which improves the previous result by one round. The specification of our zero correlation distinguisher for cases RT0, RT2, and RT3 are represented here. Here, Esther depicts an arbitrary value and gamma and delta are non-zero nibbles. The linear mask of QIC for our distinguisher in cases RT2 and RT3 is the same. And as you can see, all nibbles except for the elements one in the tweak mask can take an arbitrary value in all of our distinguishers. In other words, those nibbles that are depicted by star in tweaked mass have no effect on our distinguisher. Moreover, we showed that there is no 14 round zero correlation distinguisher in case RT1. Right. Let's move on and take a look at our distinguisher for case RT0 in more detail. Using this shape, we prove that the correlation of linear approximation that is provided for 14 rounds of craft in case RT0 must be 0. To do so, we follow the propagation of input and output linear masks for 7 rounds in forward and backward direction respectively. In this shape, white, black, and gray cells illustrate the inactive, active, and unknown cells, respectively. Then, we add the tweak schedule in our analysis. As you can see, because of XOR, the round tweak mask must be the same as the internal state mask after the add round tweak layer. Now, I want to draw your attention to the elements cell of Twix mask that is tracked by red frame over the Twix schedule throughout these four round, 14 rounds. It can be seen that it is inactive everywhere except for two rounds, including round five and six. Given that the value of the cell in Twix mask is equal to eight, 
the XOR of 11th and 8th position. In round 20 of rounds 5 and 6 respectively, must be equal to 8, due to the branching point in 2K schedule. Now, keeping this relation in mind, I want to draw your attention into rounds 5 and 6, where the contradiction is occurred. In this shape, we focus on rounds 5 and 6. If you look at this figure, you can see that the value of active cells that are illustrated by yellow frames in the left side must be the same. Similarly, the active cells marked in green frames at the right side of this figure must be the same as well. Therefore, this relation between the cells of tweaked mass that was derived in the previous slide can be converted to this relation between active cells in linear masks of internal state somewhere before and after the aspect layer of round 5. On the other hand, gamma y5 11 and gamma a6 0 are the input and output linear masks of the same box respectively. Therefore, there must exist a pair such as xy that is find the linear approximation table of the spot such that the xor of x and y equals to 8 as well. However, referring to the linear approximation table of craft spot, one can see that there is not such a pair. And this is contradiction. As you can see, the contradiction is occurred in bit level in this case whereas the contradiction occurs in board level for our distinguishers in cases RT2 and RT3. Here, I conclude this part and move on to the next part to discuss about the integral distinguishers of graphs. In Asia Group 2012, Bukdanov et al. revealed a fundamental relation between zero correlation and integral distinguishers where they proposed this theorem for the first time. More precisely, let f be a function from f0 to the n to f0 to the n, and a be a subspace, and beta is a non-zero vector, such that alpha beta is a zero correlation linear approximation for any alpha in a. Then, for any lambda in f2 to the n, this linear combination of the output bit is balanced over the orthogonal complement of A. The next theorem shows that the set of input masks should not necessarily form a subspace and a non-trivial zero correlation linear hall can always be converted to an integral distinguisher. Therefore, based on this relation, we can convert our zero correlation distinguisher to integral distinguisher for the same number of rounds. Given that only one level of tweak is involved in our zero correlation distinguisher, attacker can choose an arbitrary fixed value for the other tweak nibbles, and the domain space of the corresponding integral distinguisher is 68 instead of 128. On the other hand, the required data for the corresponding integral distinguisher must be taken from the orthogonal complement of A. In conclusion, the data complexity of the corresponding integral distinguisher equals to 2 to the 68 minus dimension of A. This table summarizes the specification of our integral distinguisher. As you can see, they cover 14 rounds of graphs, where the best previous integral distinguishers cover up to 13 rounds of this cipher. Now, we come to the last part of this talk, where I'd like to tell you about how we use a combination of automatic methods based on set solver and partitioning technique to significantly improve the differential distinguishers of graphs in single tweak models. Our strategy to search for the best differential trace 
can be divided into three steps. Given that finding an actual differential characteristic is a time-consuming task, to speed up it, we use a word-oriented MIMP or stat model to find an optimal truncated differential characteristic at first. Next, using a bit-oriented MIMP or stat model, we look for an actual differential trail satisfying the discovered truncated trail. If there is not any actual trail instantiating the discovered truncated pattern, we try another truncated pattern. In order to evaluate the differential effect, we use CryptoSMT. CryptoSMT is based on SMT and SAT solvers, which performs the following steps to evaluate the differential effect. The problem of searching for the best differential trail is encoded into a SAT problem in CNF form at first. Next, the input and output differences are fixed. And after that, a SAT solver such as a cryptomian SAT is called to fit to find one solution X. Solution X here is, for example, a differential trait. Soon after finding a solution, some new constraints are added to the model to exclude the previous solution. And again, the solver is invoked to find a new solution. Steps 4 and 5 are repeated until the problem becomes unsatisfiable which means all differential trails with the given input-output differences have been found. Lastly, the probability of all discovered differential trails are added together to compute the differential effect. It should be noted that CryptoSMT used a naive approach to encode the differential distribution table of a Spark. Therefore, we decided to optimize this SBOX encoding to speed up the search. To do so, firstly, we convert the DDT of SBOX into this Boolean function, where x and y are the input and output differences respectively, and p is a 3-bit binary vector such that the integer sum of p0, p1, and p2 satisfies this relation. Next, we obtain the minimized CNF representation of this Boolean function using coin McCleskey or Espresso algorithm and use this minimized CNF representation in our model. Applying our simple strategy on 10 bounds of graph, we found a differential distinguisher with probability of 2 to the minus 50.25, whereas the best previous single tweak differential distinguisher covered 10 rounds with probability of 2 to the minus 62.65, 61. However, competing the differential effect using this strategy is a very time consuming task, especially for higher number of rounds. For instance, the enumeration of about 2 to the 21 optimum differential trades for our 10 round distinguishers took about four days on a desktop and we had to interrupt it due to the lack of enough memory. This limitation motivated us to exploit graph properties to speed up the process. Looking for a better strategy, we had some observations. We observed that for these input output differences, there is always an optimal differential trail with the same activity pattern for every even number of rounds, starting from 8 rounds. We had a similar observation for odd number of rounds with these input output differences. Another interesting observation is that these distinguishers can be divided into three different parts, where the middle part is a repeatable one. These inspiring observations let us to the partitioning technique. For example, this figure represents three parts of our distinguisher for 10 rounds of graph. Let me explain this figure in more detail. All colored cells except for cyan colored cells represent active cells for an optimal differential trade with a fixed input output differences. Cells highlighted in 
cyan re represents the inactive cells due to the cancellation after misfire. As you can see, the middle part can be repeated as much as required to construct longer distinguisher since its input and output activity patterns are the same. Moreover, as you can see, the difference at 14th and 10th position of X4, here I mean, must be the same, and they both must be different than the difference at 6th position of X4 to satisfy the optimum truncated pattern that is depicted in this figure. Therefore, there are in total 3,150 possible cases for the internal differences at the output of the first part. A similar argument can be provided for the input-output differences of the middle part and input difference of the last part. Now, given that computing the differential effect for each of these a smaller parts is too much easier than computing the differential effect for the whole distinguisher, we compute the differential effect of each part separately at first. To do so, for all possible output differences of the first part, for example, we compute the differential effect and store the result into a matrix. In the same way, we compute the differential effect for the middle and last part, for all possible cases. Finally, assuming that graph is a Markov cipher, the total probability is obtained by multiplying the probability matrices provided for each part. Given that, there are in total 3150 possible values for the internal differences, and we were not able to compute the differential effect for all of them using our computational resources, we limited the intermediate active levels to be in a special set. Referring to the craft spark, we choose this set, which, in, which consists of five differences, including 5, 7, A, D, and F, because of two reasons. Firstly, for each X in this set, there exists a Y in the set, such that the probability of X to Y is maximum, since, as you can see, the craft box is a differentially four uniform box. Secondly, for each X in this set, and for each Z out of this set, the probability of X to Z is non-optimal. Now, as you can see in this picture, by limiting the active levels in the output of the first part to be in the specified set, there will be only 100 possible cases for it. The input-output differences of the middle part and input difference of the last part are limited in the same way. Consequently, the number of possible cases and the size of probability matrices for each part will be significantly reduced, which makes us able to efficiently compute a lower bound for the differential effect of longer distinguishers. Thanks to the combination of partitioning technique and automatic methods based on SAS, we could significantly improve the single trick differential distinguishers of crafts. For example, as you can see in this table, we concatenated three smaller parts of lengths 4, 4, and 6 as first, middle, and last part respectively to provide a 14 round distinguisher. That completes my presentation. Now we come to the end of this talk, where I have summarized our main results. As you can see, we improved the single three differential distinguishers of graph by four rounds, and we improved zero correlation and integral distinguishers of graph by one round. Before I finish, let me just say that all of our codes are publicly available via the following link. Thank you for listening.